I'm Greg Lynn. I've been teaching at UCLA as a studio professor for a dozen years or so and have taught one super studio in the past and numerous research studios. One of the things at UCLA that's happened is we were really the first school to look at large-scale robots for manufacturing and for fabrication. And the students that graduated from UCLA graduated over the last 10 years with a skill set to be able to talk to manufacturing and contemporary construction using robots and, and CAD CAM. I would say that recently that template that UCLA pioneered has been duplicated and it's very common to find CAD CAM and fabrication and a lot of young architects focus on building pavilions and interiors and um, working with new kinds of materials and new construction techniques and that's really where we are today. We're at this moment where CAD CAM has revolutionized the way we build and also the way we send documents for construction. So I think that's a given. And really what we're trying to do at UCLA is prepare students for 10 years in the future. So we're not educating them for today, we're educating them to be leaders 10 years from now or 15 years from now. And one of the things I think is happening is buildings are becoming more flexible, elastic, mobile, lightweight, and in even extreme cases, movable. And one of the things I'm personally interested in is looking at these robotic technologies to make our buildings smarter and uh, more dynamic. A couple of years ago, I worked for a client who was doing an integrated resort in Singapore. And uh, part of this was uh, a large-scale theater, and there was a huge budget number in it. And I said, what is that for? And he said, well, we're going to have to build a robotic stage for Cirque du Soleil. And it was a, the biggest number in the budget, let's say. I mean, much bigger than the building budget. And I said, really, it's that expensive to do a robotic stage? And so I started to go around and look what the theater world was doing with robots in terms of performance and was knocked out. Um, it got me looking around and I started to see more and more building elements moving as spectacles. And it was really a combination of a few things. First, that these robots that were made for industry were being rethought in terms of amusement parks and Las Vegas shows and things like that. Um, the second thing is the designers and the architects were able to think through these things as replacing structure. And I just saw this whole industry emerging. It's a niche industry. But when you see that, suddenly you look at an elevator and an escalator and a door and a window, and everything that moves in a building already really changes. And you start to think, if I put a servo on my windows and doors, what, how would that change the way that I would think about my environment? And if my furniture with wheels had motors like my vacuum cleaner, how would that change the way I would think about my workspace and my living space? So for me, this idea of lightweight, movable construction, along with an intelligent environment where the things that you open and close in a building are smart enough to open and close themselves, um, I really think that that's one place the future is going. And I know, for me, I want to be involved in the design of that world. Like, I don't want to leave that to be a technical problem. I want to make that a design topic. So, for me, that's really one of the things I want to do with Super Studio, is look at intelligent buildings and moving parts and just rethink everything from the doors and windows to the furniture to the building itself in terms of motion. So... When I spoke to Hitoshi and you know Chris Waterman and everyone and said, we need a partner, this is what I'm interested in, I said, well, who are the best people that are doing this? There's Disney, there's Cirque du Soleil, there's companies like Boeing. And so we started off and said, well, pick one. And I said, seems like Disney would be a good topic. And 
boom, we got Disney as a partner. So the lead faculty member really gets to kind of follow their instinct on what a topic would be, and then we build the whole teaching team and partnership team around whatever that intuition is.